morning, church family. And welcome, everyone. A special warm welcome to William and his family. That's his first time with us. And he's not even two weeks old or just about. It's great to have you all here with us this morning. Um, the birds were chirping that uh, there is a birthday today. Where are you? James, there you are, shaking your head <laughs> and smiling at the same time. Anyone else um, celebrating their birthday? Or I have celebrated my birthday as well. <gasps> yes? No? All right. So let's sing happy birthday to James. And if you want to include me, take that as well. Happy birthday to us! <laughs> Thank you so much for your patience. Um, we have a family service today with some refreshments served in the hall this time. So you are all welcome to leave through this door and come into the hall for the refreshments after the service. The theme of the service is the church and I would like to invite all of you to say why on earth we are, probably we have to skip a few slides, um, why we are together today. God loves me. Um, I'm sure you are familiar by now uh, with the words, but the actions, just to refresh it. God loves me from the tips of my, top of my head to the tips of my toes, from the lobes of my ears to the end of my nose, from my back to my front to my wiggly fingers, God loves me. So why are we together? Would you please stand and let's say together. We are here because God loves me. From the top of my head to the tips of my toes, from the lobes of my ears to the end of my nose, from my back to my front, to my wiggly fingers, God loves me. He loves, thank you very much, you can take your seat. Now, um, God loves us. And Jesus said, for where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Let's talk to him, let us pray. As you promised to be with us, Lord Jesus, we welcome you here today. Help us, Lord, to worship you, to listen to your word, and to pray in faith that we might grow in our love for you and for one another. Amen. Let's stand to sing our opening praise. Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here.
we just sang to be still for God is here with us. Now, I know for some it's more difficult to be still and for all the fidgety fingers and, and hands, there are activity sheet and coloring sheet available at both entrances. Feel free to stand gently up and, um, and help yourself to some activity and coloring sheets and pencils as well. We have them at both entrances. Today, we are going to start with a quiz it is called What is This? And I need to switch off the lights so you can see it better. A little bit better. So, um, you will see everyday objects in close ups. See if you can guess what they are. Let's go to the next slide, please. Can, can you guess what this is? For those who can turn around, maybe the resolution is better on, on the screen behind, uh, behind you, up at the balcony. But could you guess what this is? What, what this could be? Yes, the committee made the decision to upgrade our AV system. <laughs> and and that, is, that is coming. Um, but any guesses what this could be? Meteorite, yes, because the end of it is blurred. I can see why, why you would think, but this is an everyday object that can be found in most households. A candle, really good guess, getting closer. Rather a candle than a meteorite, but it is not. What do you think? Yes. A spoon. It has something to do with food. It is not a spoon, though. A banana. A banana. Yeah, it's a little bit smaller than a banana. Well, this is a really close-up picture of a spaghetti. So this, can, can, can you see the spaghetti in it? No. Well, try the other screen. <laughs> Maybe maybe that is better. Um, let's see, let's see the next picture. Okay, that's another everyday object. Can you guess what on earth this could be? A spider web. Well, that can be found in most households. That is true. It is not a spider web, do. A close-up picture of something. Cotton wool. Fibers, yes, really warm, really warm. Sponge. Sponge. Mm, I think the cotton wool was a bit closer. Cloth. A cloth. It's a really special and really, really thin cloth. Actually, that's a tea bag. <laughs> Up close. If we are zooming in, that is a tea bag. Okay, but good guesses, good guesses, well done. Next slide, let's go to the third one. Yeah, any guesses? What is this? It's not too, yes? An egg? I don't know what would make you think that, that it is an egg, but... Um, it has something to do with food, though, not an egg. A tree trunk getting warmer, getting warmer. Well, that's an apple stem. That's an apple stem. All right, OK, I think we have one more here. What do you think this could be? Is it a bubble? Yes. Bubbles. Yes. Yes. So bubbles. Good, go good guess. I wanted to give you an option of shattered glass, bubble wrap, or soap foam. But yes, soap foam, bubbles. Well done. Well done. Sometimes we think we know what something is, but we may get it wrong. If I ask you today the question, what is the church? Then what would be your answer? What is the church? What is the church? Any 
Any thoughts? Yes. A building, okay. With people? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Worshipping God? Mm -hmm. Oh, house of God. House of God, okay. What is the church? People. Family. Church family. Let's turn to God's word to see um, what the Bible is saying, actually what God is saying about us. What is the church? I'm reading his word from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. As you come to Jesus, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We are going to build a church now. And then we see if um, we all have the right picture of what the church is. A reading says that our church begins with Jesus. Am I on? Yep. So the church begins with Jesus, the living stone, the cornerstone, the most important stone of all. Because we can't see Jesus, although he is alive and he is here with us. I have brought something here. If, if you look at it, you can see that that's the name of Jesus printed, right? And if I turn it sideways, then, uh, then it, it shapes a cross as well. So this is going to represent Jesus this morning. This is not Jesus, only representing him, right? So I'm going to place Jesus here up front just moving the Bible a little bit back all right um, the reading then says that as people come to Jesus they to become like living stones that God puts together to build his church so I need a good few people, maybe 10, 12 volunteers. There are no lines. You don't have to say anything. But I would love to see um, a lovely group of people gathering around Jesus to shaping a church here. I want people from all ages, from all backgrounds, just, just to say, stand here in, in, in a semicircle around, around Jesus. Any volunteers? Everyone is welcome. Well done, ladies. Well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> to create a lovely balance so we wouldn't, we wouldn't go to one side only. Lovely. Lottie or Lena, would you like to come and, and join as well? It's okay, you don't have lines to say here. No? Any other takers? Well done. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's great to see a lovely church being built around Jesus. Jesus being at the center. People from different backgrounds, with different gifts, um, with different life experiences, who have all come to Jesus and the church is just growing. This is great. The church comes to Jesus to receive forgiveness for their sins and the gift of his eternal life for us. So if I ask you to, to draw a picture of a church, would, would your drawing be something like on the screen now? Or, or, or more a group of people like this gathered around Jesus? The church is the people of God, isn't it? 
not the building we meet in. Now, if you are observant, you will notice that, that there are some gaps. And it's definitely not a closed circle, but, but an open circle. Our church is open for anyone, with place for everyone to join in. It's not an elite club where you need an invite from, from an in member and you need to pay, pay your, your fees, otherwise you cannot join it. We are an open community. Our church is open to anyone and everyone, welcoming all. So if the church is the people of God rather than the building, what's God's purpose for us, his church? To keep it really simple, we can use three short words that are coming up on, on the screen. Yes, we can summarize it really simple. Simply, we can summarize it that God's purpose with us as his church is up, in, and out. Can you say these three words with me? Up, in, and out. All right. So what is the first word? Up. Um... Would you volunteers please uh, turn towards um, the picture representing Jesus there and, and put your hands up like, like this, facing towards Jesus? Yeah. Church, what are they doing? Facing towards Jesus, lifting their hands up. Praising, worshiping Jesus. Thank you so much. Well done. Well done. Thank you very much. So up. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priest who the holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. So the first purpose of the church is up. Focusing up, to lift up his name, to declare his praises, to worship God. Up, worshipping God, declaring his praises. So we as a church are to worship God. We will do that together by saying Psalm 100. Uh, thank you for the volunteers for your involvement. You were great. Feel free to take your places now. And it's time for all of us to focus up, to praise God, to lift up his name. We are going to do that by saying the Psalm 100 together. Now, there's a twist in it. Uh, I'm going to start and um, reading the first um, verse. And then the church on my left um, is going to say the next sentence. And then the right side is going to say the next one. And there will be one more set for both sides. Are you in to focus up, to praise God, to lift up his name? Let's do that together. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's stand to sing our next praise. The splendor of the king, how great thou art.
we have seen that the church is the people of God with three purposes, which can be shortened by saying up, in, and out. The up purpose is to worship God, to lift up his name. The in purpose is growing a community on earth that looks rather like the community of God in heaven. There's a painter called Rublev who tried to show us something about what God is like by paint, painting this icon of the Trinity. This is not how God actually looks like, of course, only revealing to us a few things about God's character. Rublev imagined God the Father on the left-hand side. Next to him, God the Son, Jesus. And next to him is God the Holy Spirit. This picture helps us to see that God himself, the Holy Trinity, is a community of relationships. For example, at Jesus' baptism, the Holy Spirit was present in the form of the dove, and the Father spoke from heaven as Jesus went into the river Jordan. They were in a relationship with one another. So what sort of relationship do you think exists within the Godhead? Well, we only have to look at Jesus' life and his relationship with his Father to see that the relationship in the community of the Godhead is one of love, unity, and self-giving. And the church is to be a community on earth that looks rather like the community of God in heaven. So it is a community where people love each other, accept one another, serve one another, encourage one another, live in harmony with one another, and submit to one another. Can you imagine how attractive this sort of community is to people outside the church? When the church looks like the community of the Holy Trinity, it will bring glory to God. And it will grow as people are drawn into it. And notice, if we go back one slide, notice in Rublev's icon, although the Trinity are in close relationship, the, the heads are so close to one another. There's this space in front, room for others to join in and be welcomed. Thank you, we can go to the next slide. In to grow our church family, we all need to take part. We all need to invest in to the church to grow a God-like community. So what do you think? What ways can we invest in? What ways can we bless our church family? What ways can we help our church? This is an open question. Pray for each other. We can pray for each other. Great. I love it. Hmm. What other ways? You are really good with these sort of things. Volunteering. Volunteering. Like what? For what? To help at organizations. We have a beautiful BB and a great GB. Um, it wouldn't be possible without our committed leaders and volunteers who are giving their time, their love, their care, their energy. Not mentioning the cool church kids leaders or the Bible. Where is John? Um, the, the Bible class um, as well. Giving time, giving care. Or, or there are some really, really blessed people in the background cleaning the church while we have no cleaner at this time, keeping everything nice and tidy and organized. Or, or those who are bringing flowers to, to our church. Those who are visiting 
our members praying for one another, as, as someone said so well. Those who are looking after the finances or in the committee making all the decisions regarding the building and finances and, and events and, and whatever is happening in the church. Mark, doing all the numbers. <laughs> we have so many. And, and sorry for those whom I, I forgot to, to mention by, by position here. This church is so good. But there's place for more to join in, to, to bless us. Okay, volunteering. Well done, Sheila, Sheena. Um, what, what other ways can we be a blessing for our church family? So I'm looking out for each other if somebody's going through bereavement or something like that. Yeah. Out yeah. Help. Yeah. Just, just being in touch. Yeah. Supporting. I love it. Thank you, Phil. What other ways? Mm. Mm. And the third part will be out. You are on the right track. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but, but this is in time. The church is also good in giving, providing for financial need. Today we are going to lift the offering during the service. There are cards. Um, at both entrances, if you haven't picked up, just wave your hand and one of the others will jump up and, and get a card for you. Please don't feel obliged to giving. Um, this is a way to, to support for our church family and for, for the work of God in a wider sense. Um, if, if you are giving by direct debit or through any other arrangement, to the needs of the church family, feel free to put the wee token of giving in, in the collection plate um, that are going to be passed around in a moment. While we pass around the baskets, we will watch a short video that is on the next slide to learn more about where the money goes beyond Caridor. This video is a bit outdated, so some of the numbers are not correct, but this was the newest that I found. Let's watch the video and may I have some help passing the, the offering plates around. how many things we can do together when we come in, when we come together and when we invest in our time, our money, our love, our care, our energy. We can do so many things together and it's better together than being apart. That's... We are going to 
pray a short prayer over, over the offerings. Let's join together in prayer. Thank you, God, that everything we have is coming from you. Help us to use your gifts well. And when we give our time, our energy, our care, our money, our love, help others to see your love for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To recap then, what are the three purposes of the church according to God? Up is to, to, to praise God, to worship God, to lift him up. In is to grow a more God-like community here on earth. And the third point is out. Yes. Jesus taught his disciples to go out, to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Mark 16 verse 15. The church's third purpose is to go into the world and share the good news about Jesus with those who haven't heard it yet. <laughs> All right, so I I shared with um, with Mark and Rosie just before the service that there's some chocolate hidden behind the Bible, and um, they haven't shared the news with others, <laughs> but they came to to enjoy the chocolate. Now, the church should not be closed in keeping the good news for ourselves. Would you agree with that? We are to share the good news. Well, we have a lot better good news that there is some chocolate available. Don't feel excluded. We, we do have some refreshments in the hall for everyone, for each and every one of you. Um, please do come and, and share some in time together. But we have a lot better good news to share with people rather than I have some chocolate. Do you want to enjoy it? It gives temporary joy. But the good news of Jesus Christ brings everlasting joy and peace and strength and life. That news that God made us for who we are. That he loves us. So he sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. So we can live in peace with God. We can become his children, both now and for all eternity. And God has plans with our lives. He has got a purpose with us. This is the good news we are to share with people who don't know him yet. This news is to be spread to our families, our friends, our neighbors, the people of Caridor and beyond in all the earth. We have some yummy things to share with you. But we have an even better good news we are to share with others. So today we have discovered that the church is not a building. It's the people of God with three purposes. Up, worshipping God. In, growing a God-like community. And out, sharing the good news about Jesus. Let's stand and sing our next praise, Jesus, all for Jesus.
James is going to give us a quick update on the General Assembly that happened about a week ago. Get my glasses on here. I'm very conscious of uh, the time that's going on, so I'll be as brief as, uh, as I can. Um, I, don't, I want to give you just a, a flavour, really, of uh, what happened in, in the General Assembly uh, this uh, last week, really. And the General Assembly started uh, on Wednesday night, and that there's a service of worship on the Wednesday night when the new moderator is installed, and, uh, and the, the old moderator, um, he hands over to the new moderator, and he's installed as uh, Dr. Sam Mopini. He is the first minister from a congregation uh, south of the border, and he, uh, he is present minister in Dublin, Adelaide Road, Presbyterian Church. And he, he uh, really spoke on his theme, and his theme for the year, for his year in office, will be confident in Christ and over the next you know or the the next three days of the assembly um, the church has I suppose 500 plus congregations across uh, all all the island of Ireland heard and debated uh, in a wide range of issues uh, and concerns and from if you take from 2020 you know there's been a six and a half percent drop in the number of families and so we're not alone in this COVID has uh, done quite a a lot of harm over all the denominations, really. And on top of that, if you consider there's another 65 uh, ministers that will be retiring in the next, uh, there'll be 65 vacancies over the next three years, a further 65, and a shortfall in the student ministers graduate. And so it's a, no surprise that the, um, there was a reconfiguration task group that had been busy in the background looking into the whole future of mission and ministry in the whole uh, in our whole church. And this vision came forward as a green paper. And uh, out of this, this is the blue book I showed you last year. This year I think it was bigger than ever, 416 pages of the business that was going to be done. Now I would encourage anybody that's, uh, that would like to go onto the computer, go to the Presbyterian Church website, and look and see what's there. Look at the news. Look at the decisions that were decided. And you can, everything is in that book. You'll find on the website. And it's really, really interesting to go in there and look at that. And now there's been a green paper proposed looking at the whole vision um, of, of where we as a denomination are growing. Going. And that will be... Uh, and We, we uh, give a green light for this and... Uh, that green paper then will be discussed by the presbyteries, and that will have uh, far-reaching implications for us all. And I think it'll be a stronger way forward at the end of it. And that probably won't be uh, approved until next year's general assembly. Um, and now, one of the things that really struck me about the general assembly was that it has called for all Northern Ireland authorities to prioritise the most vulnerable in society. In the middle of the cost of living crisis and to work together effectively for anti-poverty measures. Um, and uh, if, you, if you're going up to General Assembly and you walk along the street and see the number of homeless people and the people that need our help, I think, um, you know, we all have to work together. And the importance of church planting was also recognised and the Council of Mission Strategy was given the green light for a new role uh, of a mission pioneer in Ireland. So that uh, is a very important new development. Um, highlight has always been listening to the global church with missionaries and ministers from Malawi, Myanmar, Syria, Iran, um, working and expanding churches and uh, often facing persecution and, and very difficult uh, uh, conditions and Reverend John Kilpatrick spoke also of his visit to Beirut and how it had changed his vision of um, you know the people's commitment and out there it was unbelievable and uh, 
you know, I think I think we we're all very lucky to live in a country that we do, and um, you, you know, and live as free as we do. Now there was also um, praise services, uh, and some some of you down there also attended those. And um, they, as 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 was said before, the uh, whole assembly started. Those were open to everybody, and I think um, uh, it is a it's great to see it. Some people actually went up. Now, also, the last thing I'm going to say is just really on on, on communion and, and things that really affect us down, you know, in our own church. And there is now paved the way that we could have more com- communion if we wanted to. And those sessions, um, also, uh, those for who are uh, intellectually dis- disabled now can become members of our con- uh, of uh, members of the church and be given communion as well, which I think is great to see. These are just a few of few of the decisions we made. I don't want to go on any longer than that. But um, if you go onto that website and look down and see the amount of business, see the commitment that's been given to taking our our faith forward, I, I think you know we really will be challenged, and and I think it's been a great that's a great uh, opportunity for any. Uh, but to see the amount of work that's been done, um, and see the uh, just the commitment that is there from everybody uh, to take our faith forward. So thank you very much uh, for listening to me. Oh, we haven't kept you too late, but there you go. Thank you very much, James. Thank you so much. Yes, another way we can be a blessing for for our church families giving our time. And I really appreciate, James, that you came there, you you were there, so you know what is happening in the wider denomination. And um, that brief summary was like 35, six pages worth out of the 416 pages. So, so many other things happened um, there as well. But um, we are really blessed with, uh, with the Kirk session, making decisions um, regarding our congregation and our awesome AV team uh, looking after the screens and, and the online broadcast. Um, thank you so much as well. You are all a blessing for us. So we can get a lot further together when we bring what we have in. Today we learned that Jesus is the most important part, the cornerstone, the living stone of the church. And we are each part of the church, building up to a spiritual home. After the closing praise, um, you have have all received um, a, a tiny stone, have you? Okay. So after the closing praise, I would like to ask you to bring your tiny stone and leave at the foot of Jesus as a sign of your commitment to be part of this spiritual building, of these living stones, building the congregation here in Caridor Presbyterian Church, becoming part or being part of God's people here, serving and giving what you have and who you are for his purposes. We are going to pray a short prayer now. After every short sentence, I invite you to say, thank you, God. Not difficult line, right? Will you be able to do that? Thank you, God. That will be your part. Let's pray together. Dear God, for your love for us and your power working in us, thank you, God. For our church and all the people in it, thank you, God. For the friends we make here, thank you, God. For the things we learn here, thank you, God. For the people you love, but they are not yet here, thank you, God. For the jobs you give all of us here, thank you, God. And for the prayers we say and you listen, thank you, God. Amen. Amen. A couple of quick announcements before we conclude the service. With sadness, I announce the death of our member Tom Newell. Would you please pray for the family? His funeral will be here in the church 
on Wednesday morning from half ten. Wednesday morning, half ten. I would like to advertise the Arise, Shine, the Bangor Worldwide uh, Missionary Convention that is from the 18th to the 27th of August. Be part of the UK and Ireland's biggest world mission event with Bible studies, exhibitions, seminars, kids and youth events. Join us for 10 days of prayer, praise, and stories of what God is doing across the world, Bangor Worldwide. Uh, for more details, go to worldwidemission.org and you will find poster at the entrance and later on here in the hall as well. I will be away from early tomorrow morning until the following Tuesday and Herbie knows the contacts for emergency pastoral care so just turn to him if you need emergency pastoral care there is cover organized for that would you please all come to the church hall for refreshments after the service and on the way leave um, your stone at the feet of Jesus as a symbol of of coming together to a living spiritual building let's stand and praise God by singing, for I'm building a people of power. <laughs> Beloved of God, go now in peace to love and to serve with the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.